USA. Today our broadcast called Movie Making takes us to the Walt Disney Studio to visit with the famous Walt Disney himself. Come on, let's hurry. There's Walt Disney himself, standing in the doorway of his office. Hello, Hi. Paula. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm fine. Oh, uh, don't tell me I'm late. No, no, no. But I thought maybe I could take you along here and show you some of the work that we're doing on Cinderella and Alice in Wonderland. You know we're rolling at top speed on these pictures right now. Oh, I'd love to. But first, before we start, won't you tell our listeners about some of these awards here in the cabinet? You know, I've never seen so many medals and golden Oscars... Which was the first, Mr. Disney? Well, this one right here. This uh, is a special award presented in 1932 for the creation of Mickey Mouse. I see. Bless his little heart. <laughs> and uh, what are all of those medals in the cases? Well, there's several here from the Parents Magazine and, and, and a few from Look, and these others are from France, and here's some from Italy and South America and so forth. Uh-huh. And that one over there, that... Uh... <laughs> you mean the big sign? Yes. Well, that was from Russia. Oh! <laughs> Good many years ago, though. I understand they don't love you as much no. anymore. <laughs> uh, Mr. Disney, is there any award you've received among these many that is the most treasured? Well, it's really hard to say. You know, each award has been important to us, and we've been highly appreciative of all of them. But I think uh, the winning of the Thalberg Award is the most coveted honor. Oh, oh yes. Uh, that's it right there. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. The plaque reads... For the most consistent, high quality of production achievement. Oh, my, that is wonderful. Certainly a great honor to bestow on any producer. But I, uh, I'd like to say I know of no producer who's given more joy to the whole world than you have with your wonderful pictures. Well, thanks, Paula. It's nice to hear that. <laughs> By the way, I might mention in connection with that Falberg Award, you know, there's a little uh, kiss from Norma Shearer that goes with it. At least it did when I got it. Oh, I don't know why. Oh, I think <laughs> that has anything to do with my liking it. You, 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 it uh, you got a double <laughs> award, huh? <laughs> but it, it is a really uh, a great award. And uh, I, for our work, we uh, I think we have a harder time doing a, a cartoon feature than uh, you would with real actors. I think it's a more difficult job. Uh-huh. And now the latest is Cinderella, is that right? No, no. Cinderella and Alice in Wonderland are the latest in production. Oh, I see. But uh -huh. we've just finished one called Ichabod and Mr. Toad. And I feel this picture has many qualities that will appeal to moviegoers of all ages. Would you like uh, to see some of the drawings on Cinderella? And oh, then we yes. can talk about Ichabod on the way. Oh, yes, that would be wonderful. Uh, who plays Ichabod and who plays Mr. Toad in the story? I mean, who are the voices? Well, Bing Crosby does Ichabod, and when I say he does it, I, I mean he really does it. He uh -huh. tells it, and he, he plays Ichabod, he plays uh, Brom Bones, and, and oh, that's every terrific. part except Katrina, you see. And uh -huh. Basil Rathbone narrates Mr. Toad. Oh, oh that's delightful. And, and does Bing Crosby sing? Oh, yes, he does. He sings three songs. The theme song, Ichabod, and the ballad, Katrina, and then a very scary number called The Headless Horseman. Mm. And it's... Uh, when his big sings this number, it's going to be Halloween every time he does. <laughs> That's cute. Very spooky, huh? Bing Crosby combined with a Walt Disney character. Now, there's an unbeatable combination. You you certainly are busy with production going at top speed. Ichabod and Mr. Toad finished, and Cinderella and Alice in Wonderland and animation, and now I hear you're leaving for England to do Treasure Island. That's true, Paula. And we're pretty excited about this picture. For one thing, it's our first totally live-action feature. And absolutely no animation in the picture at all. That's right. <laughs> well, for one thing, I just want to prove to my artists I can do something without them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. And then, of course, <laughs> Fraser Island, to me, is one of the world's greatest stories, and I feel it should be done in live action. Yes. Of course, it'll be filmed in Technicolor. And right over in England, that's all right, of it. That's right, in the locale of the story. Oh, that's marvelous. In my mind's eye, I can see a giant theater marquee Walt Disney presents Ichabod and Mr. Toad, Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, and Treasure Island. Oh, <laughs> what a treasure of pictures for the movie fans. You don't mean all on one bill. No, only in my mind's <laughs> eye. <laughs> well, uh, Paula, I, I'd like to show your listeners something that few people ever see. I'd like to take them through the various rooms of the artists and the animators and try to show just how pictures like Cinderella and Alice in Wonderland come to life on the screen. Oh, that so would be wonderful. You step right through this door. Mm, oh, yes. And uh, <laughs> while we pause on the threshold of this wonderful treat, let's hear a word from the announcer. This is Paula Stone again, speaking to you from the Walt Disney Studios, where Mr. Disney himself is taking us on a personally conducted tour of the animation building, and... Oh, Mr. Disney, this room is breathtaking. 
The walls are lined with beautiful pictures in glowing colors. Oh, this is amazing. Well, what you're looking at, Paula, is a cartoon script. Is that so? That's right. You see, it's a sort of a pictorial scenario. Uh-huh. And each one of those little pictures is a particular development in the progress of a story like Cinderella. And this see? is Cinderella. This We're is Cinderella. At... Uh-huh. You see, all of these little things are sketched up. They're placed on this board and into this storyline. And, of course, these are only part of the drawings that go in the making of it. Before we get through the picture, there'll be at least a quarter million drawings. From this point, it moves down to the top animators. Yes. And they do all the key drawings, and then they have assistants who fill in the secondary things. I see. Then each animator, uh, you might say, has a crew. Huh? Oh, yes. Uh, the top art, uh, animator will have at least ten assistants, and uh, they'll work. each one works on a certain sequence. Then later on, scores of girls come in. We call them inkers and painters because they ink and paint the drawings. I see, And yes. they complete the process. Uh-huh. They transfer the, the, from the pencil drawings of the artist, they transfer it onto the celluloid. Then these celluloids later on are placed under the camera with the background underneath them and photographed by the camera. Oh. And you know, we use as high as 2,000 different colors in making our pictures. Oh, that's amazing. But to go back to the beginning, just how do you start a cartoon, Mr. Disney? I mean... What are the very first essentials before you reach the point that we're seeing here today? Well, the very first essential is a good story. Well, see. naturally. Then, yes. as I've shown you here, we develop it in this sort of a comic strip uh, scenario form. Yes. Then we get into story conferences, and everybody uh, tears it apart, and uh, we throw stuff out and put new stuff in and rebuild and, uh -huh. and add and all of that until finally we get a story that we feel is right. Then it goes into the process, as I was describing, of the animators beginning to uh, create the models and uh, set up the characters. You see, we have to sort of cast with a piece of pencil. And how do you and cast? A, a piece of paper and <laughs> pencil. <laughs> and, and find the right, right character to be used. And you have and sheets of, that, of uh, that... Uh... Out of that comes a model sheet. Oh, that's how it's that's done. That's how mm -hmm. all the artists keep the characters looking alike. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. I should be able to tell this better after all the years of it. Well, it's one thing to create it and draw it and build this, and yeah. it's another thing to tell it. Okay. Well, you see that little fat mouse over there in that picture? Oh, yes. Well, there are a lot of mice around Cinderella in the picture, but... Uh, oh, I see what you mean, the little fat one yeah. there, yeah. Uh, Gus, we call him Gus. Gus, uh-huh. This is a very amusing sequence, I hope, in the film, where that uh, the other mice are trying to tell Gus what a cat is. Oh, yes, uh-huh. You see, Gus has been a rather sheltered mouse all his life, and they're briefing him on just what he should do, heaven forbid, if a cat should come into his life. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful idea. By the way, Mr. Disney, are there songs in Cinderella? You always have such wonderful scores in all of your pictures. Oh, yes, we've got many songs in Cinderella. Uh-huh. In fact, right over here, Paula, is a little series of pictures describing one of the songs. Oh, yes. See, this depicts this musical sequence here. Cinderella is singing to her friends, and her friends are the mice and the birds. Yes. She's trying to describe to, the, what, to them the way she feels about the, all the work she has to do and the way her sisters treat her. Yes. And, uh... The lyric of the song is that if she says, how wonderful it would be if I could live in a land of fantasy with seven Cinderella's all working for me. Seven Cinderella's. That's Isn't right. And that then that goes cute. into a dream sequence. Uh -huh. In which she's, all these seven Cinderella's, she feels that she's the grand lady uh -huh. with these seven Cinderella's all doing all the housework. Oh, how delightful. And those drawings there, uh, they all have words under the, uh, those well, the lyrics? Well, that's the lyric of the song, uh -huh. you see, under each oh, yes. picture as it's supposed to be played on the screen in the sequence. Oh, yes. And that way, we can all follow the progress of the song, and the artists then know just what their drawings are doing and, uh, and everything, you know. Oh, it sounds very complicated, but uh, very wonderful. And now, uh, oh, uh, what about the camera that photographs these pictures? Well, we had to develop a camera. We developed a special camera here called the multiplane camera. Uh -huh. That's because it uses many planes. And uh, we have, I think, up as high as seven levels. It gives a sort of a third dimension in the drawing. I see. Anyways, I mean, uh, would you like to go through the camera building and see the camera? Well, I would love it, and it breaks my heart to say I haven't time, but that's the size of it. You see, we have just so many minutes of broadcast time, and now I'm afraid my time is almost up. Well, it's really a shame, but I'll give you a rain check. Uh, I'll just keep that rain check as a souvenir. And now I'm afraid I must head for my car. Thank you again so much for a thrilling visit. And now, folks, Mrs. Paula Stone saying so long, friends.